Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us this evening. My name is Tom Johnson. I'm a retired police chief and current professor of criminology and criminal justice at Western Carolina University. I'm also the leader of a team that will be assessing the Ware Police Department over the next several days. I would now like to introduce the other assessment team <coughs> member, Jeff McDaniel, who is a lieutenant with the Evendale Police Department in Ohio. The Commission on Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies Incorporated of Gainesville, Virginia, has authorized us to assess the Ware Police Department, which is a candidate for law enforcement accreditation. The Ware Police Department has voluntarily contracted with the Commission to work towards accreditation and thereby demonstrate its professional excellence. When the agency originally entered this process, it received the Commission's Standards Manual, which contains 189 standards for the Tier 1 accreditation level. This encompasses all facets of law enforcement management, operations, and support functions. The candidate agency has conducted a self-assessment with the intention of bringing itself into compliance with all applicable standards. The agency's proofs of compliance are on file with the Ware Police Department at 144 North Stark Highway, Ware, New Hampshire. Our responsibility as assessors for the commission is to visit the agency and verify that it's in compliance with these standards. Mr. Sean Kelly, the Interim Chief of Police and Accreditation Manager of the Ware Police Department, has retained Mr. John McGregor as an accreditation consultant to assist with and advise on the accreditation process for the agency. In accordance with the Commission's public information policy, the agency's candidacy for accreditation has been publicized in this area and the agency has arranged for this public hearing. This public hearing is intended to provide interested citizens or employees of the agency an opportunity to address this assessment team concerning the agency. If you wish to supplement your verbal comments with a written statement or exhibits, you may present them to our team at the time you speak, or you may send them later to the commission where they will be reviewed when the agency is presented for accreditation at a formal commission conference. You may mail your written remarks to the commission at the following address. <coughs> The Commission on Accreditation <coughs> for Law Enforcement Agencies Incorporated, 13575 <coughs> Heathcote Boulevard, Suite 320, Gainesville, Virginia, 20155-6660. If anyone needs this address again, you can see me after the hearing. At the beginning of the meeting, a sign-in sheet was made available in the rear of this room. Those of you who indicated a desire to speak will be given an opportunity to address us in a few moments. We ask that you limit your comments to approximately five minutes. If you wish to speak with another member of the Commission's staff, you may reach them at telephone number area code 703-352-4225. And again, if anybody needs this number, they may see me after the hearing. The Commission staff representative for the agency is Paul McMillan. You may also email your comments to Kalia at Kalia.org and ensure that you place the agency's name in the subject line. I would like to remind everyone that this meeting is being video recorded. The recording will be forwarded to the Commission for its review. Before we call our first speaker, are there any questions? Bill Peterson? I'm not speaking. I thought it was a sign in roster. Okay, well, thank thanks, you. Thanks, sir. Neither is, sir. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Allison Jean? I'm not speaking. Paul, do you know? <laughs> okay. Chief Dean? Good evening. I'm honored to be here tonight. I'm the Chief of Police with the University of New Hampshire, and the Assistant <coughs> Vice President of Student Academic Services, but I'm also here in the capacity as the President of the New Hampshire Campus Law Enforcement Administrators Association. I know firsthand uh, the success that accreditation has 
The University of New Hampshire Police Department has been accredited for nine years, not only with the, with the commission, but also with IACLEA, the International Association of Campus Law Enforcement Administrators. I know that when we undertook that process, that it was the best process that we could have ever have taken to professionalize the University of New Hampshire Police Department, and we have done nothing but grow. I have known Chief Kelly for my entire career, and Chief Kelly uh, coming here uh, is a fantastic thing for the town of Ware. I know his professionalism. I know his work ethic. I've worked alongside of him. I've watched him grow, and I've grown with him. I can't think of a better person to lead the Ware Police Department. I think when you take a look at their files and what they're doing now, I think you will find them to be excellent, in compliance, and a well-run agency. Thank you. Thank you, Chief D. Mr. Greg Murphy. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to New Hampshire. By way of introduction, I'm a retired Manchester, New Hampshire police officer. I retired in 2006. We're about 18 miles. Seems like 400 driving up here uh, from where. <coughs> I'm the current accreditation manager for Manchester. Uh, we just received our eighth reaccreditation award in Reno, so I know what it's like to be on uh, Chief Kelly's side and John McGregor's side. And I'm also the chair of the Northern New England Police Accreditation Coalition, otherwise known as NEPAC. Uh, myself and several other folks from NEPAC were here in January, on January 22nd, to do the mock. And we found the files, I think, to be uh, in good shape. Um, and I will say that working in Manchester for 22 years and uh, being in the area for most of my life, the biggest impediment to wear was the reputation. Um, I didn't know what to expect when I came here. After the mock, after looking and speaking uh, with people in the back room here, the, the officers that we met that day, that's what stuck out to me as, as a retired law enforcement officer, somebody who's been in accreditation. Their, uh, their pride was just exuding. It, they showed us around the building, they showed us some of the stuff that they did, the painting and, and renovating the building to meet standards. And uh, I felt compelled to be here tonight to share that with you. You'll see the files, we saw the files. But uh, Sean, Chief Kelly was the chair of NEPAC when I started. So it's a tribute to him that I'm here tonight to speak to you on behalf of NEPAC. So they are a great NEPAC agency. I wish them the best. I am in full support of their efforts to gain national accreditation. Thank you. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Eric. Oh, I thought it was a sign-up sheet. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Jack Dearborn? Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I lived in the town of Wayne for 63 years, and I had the opportunity to uh, grow up here. And with that, also see the town go from roughly 1,800 people when I graduated in 1970 to 10,000 people now, and sometimes in the summer it peaks to 15,000. Uh, the, the Ware Police started out as strictly a sort of a volunteer part-time situation. And then it evolved through the 80s and into a uh, full-time with some part-time folks. It went between um, a contract person for chief of police to being somebody who was elected, and we decided we needed to have a um, police commission, then we decided we didn't need to have a police commission. So it's been pretty um, circuitous route to get to where we are today. And I will say that um, it was uh, quite challenging to see the, uh, the newsprint from week to week, month to month, year to year, on uh, what was being reported regarding the Ware Police. Uh, a, couple, a couple years ago, uh, we hired uh, a chief. That person came in and pretty much, I would say, performed triage. And certain adjustments were made, uh, maybe not instantly correct in terms of how it was done. But one of the things we did benefit greatly from is uh, having uh, <coughs> Deputy Chief Sean Kelly come on board. And uh, he was brought on, so to speak, to um, professionalize the organization from a procedure standpoint. And one of the reasons that's very important for a small town like where New Hampshire is, uh, selectmen come and go who kind of <coughs> oversee the police department responsible for their behavior and their conduct. 
chiefs come and go, typically in small towns, and you have turnover of police. What's important is that um, we understand what's expected of our police force so that they can be managed appropriately, led appropriately, and also participate as foot soldiers. So I think it's very important that there's some means by which we can uh, measure that in terms of how we document and how we measure performance against the standard. So I, I'm very happy that we're in this position this evening. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Frank Campana. Uh, I'm Frank, that's correct. I'm Frank Campana. Uh, <coughs> I haven't lived in town quite as long as Jack, but about 43 years. So I've seen quite a bit, police department specifically. Um, I'm going to take a little different track. Um, I, I have a hard time believing that if we, if the town, which we have, have not been fortunate over the last quite a number of years, if we had a dedicated and committed police chief, and if we had a dedicated, committed rank and file, which we don't have a full complement now, and it's surprising to me that you know accreditation is taking a priority when we don't have a full complement of budgeted police officers. Um, but if those those two items for those two positions, that uh, we couldn't have a upstanding police department without buying as a taxpayer a plaque on the wall. Uh, there are some 242, 243 towns uh, in the state, New Hampshire. Uh, very few of those, uh, from uh, some newspaper articles, and reputable newspaper articles, that um, are accredited. And unlike where, you never read about them in the newspaper. They don't have plaques on the wall. M university system, large department, they're accredited. Manchester, large department, they're accredited. Gosstown, comparatively large department, they have accreditation. Uh, and that's fine for them. But of the ones that are accredited, most of them are large personnel departments in cities. I don't know about Concord. So uh, my concern is, is this, this seems to be a step while there's some benefit to what you folks do, setting up rules and regulations. Uh, we, we spend twenty to twenty-six thousand dollars to train an officer, um, and that should get them the mindset, and maybe not necessarily the office paperwork, but to know what needs to be done. Basically, right from wrong. And I don't believe buying a, a plaque to have hanging on the wall is the step for this department to have right now. I don't know what the commitment will be. I'm sure there'll be yearly fees. Uh, I'm sure there'll be, for you folks, I'm sure we're paying for assessments. And what what does it hold for the town in the future? Uh, is the department going to say, are you folks going to dictate that we need X number of policemen, X number of officers, X amount of floor space? Uh, you know, it, it could never end. And that what scares me about that commit that type of commitment. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Richard Butts, is it? But uh, I thought it was a sign up sheet, but I, I have a question. Um, the, there seems to be performance standards that are, are, are issued or are documented as part of the CLIA process. And could you describe what the what those performance standards are, and how do they get measured in terms of failure or success? And also, <coughs> what type of management do you foresee that uh, that should be in place between your every three-year visit? I mean, is, should there be somebody within the department assigned the responsibility <coughs> of clear uh, management? And uh, Typically, if you can, how many hours per week uh, does that uh, entail? Accreditation is an ongoing process. Um, it's hard to quantify in terms of how many hours should someone be managing it, because the reality of it is once the processes are in place, 
everyone should be doing it all the time. Um, the standards are, in essence, the best practices of the profession. And so uh, it's up to uh, Chief Kelly and the other members of the agency to create a culture of engaging in these best practices. And, you know, each agency addresses uh, accreditation in a somewhat different fashion. They all have to comply with the standards, but how they comply with it, they have a lot of discretion in. So it's kind of hard for me to answer some of your questions, having only arrived today and not knowing all that much about the Ware Police Department other than what I'm seeing here. But that would be a responsibility of Chief Kelly and whoever uh, succeeds them in the future to ensure that they have uh, whatever they need in place to continue with this culture of engaging in best practices. I don't know if that really gets to your question. Well, I was looking for something specific. If you, if you can give me a specific example of a, of a, a standard that <coughs> is easily measured and uh, something that you would look at in a three-year period to see if, it's, if they're in compliance. <coughs> And, and have, have any organizations failed um, or agencies? Very few. That I, I mean, personally, I've only seen one agency fail, and and there were some extenuating circumstances for those. This is a monumental undertaking, so an agency has to be committed, and typically, when they're committed, they they will not fail. Type thing. In terms of, of assessing what they do, they are required to develop uh, proofs of compliance. And, uh, you know, we look at the proofs of <coughs> compliance to ensure that the behavior matches the standard. And some of it's subjective, some of it's objective. Uh, for example, there are standards that deal with attempts to try and have an agency workforce that is representative of the community in terms of demographics. And absent that, they should have a recruitment plan in place to try and match that. <coughs> so, to a certain extent, that is quantified. Other things are, are subjective based upon the experiences of the assessors. And, and one of the things Kalia does is all your assessors are command staff officers, meaning that you know we have the experience and the background to look at, at the, uh, these proofs to determine whether or not they are in compliance. Thank you. Okay. Did we have another sign-in sheet going around that? There was no sheet that I used. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Marge Burke. Thank you. Um, I agree with what Mr. Dearborn said so eloquently. Um, he expressed my feelings about the Ware Police Department and the efforts that they are making right now to improve their reputation, um, their community policing efforts, and um, I'm the chair of the school board here in town, so I know that they have a good, we have a good working relationship with the police department and our schools, and I want to see that continue with the continued professionalism of our police department here in town. I have a son who's a police officer in another state in a department that is credited or has it, its accreditation has lapsed and they are in the process of um, getting it back in order. And so I've talked to him a little bit about it and says how much it improves the professionalism of the department and the uh, uh, reputation in the community and so that it's not an antagonistic one it's more of um, cooperation and so I fully support uh, the efforts that Chief Kelly and the department are going through to achieve this accreditation. Thank you. <coughs> Linda Fiala. Hi. Hi. I've been a citizen here for 25 years, but I also oversee the operations of a business. And while the police department <coughs> has always been just the utmost uh, 
support to us as a business, they have had so many problems in the past. And while accreditation is not mandatory, we know that, but I think from the standpoint of what we're looking for as citizens as, and business people, to know that they're accredited and know that they will gain some respect from this as well as a camaraderie that they'll gain from this, They've been beaten up so much over the past few years that I think this has just brought them together and what Chief Kelly has done over the past few years or year has been amazing. And also bringing in the community because I've become much more aware of the operations of the police department over the past year. So I'm in full support of this as well as the fact that they're putting all this effort in. Thank, Thank you. you. Neil Kirk. Thank you and good evening. Good evening. Um, the Air <coughs> Police Department um, over the past four or five years, perhaps even longer, has had a spotty record. But in the past two years, under Chief Valeca and continued by Chief Kelly, the department has done a 180. Um, Chief Valeca got rid of some of the bad apples, kept the good ones, and has made some extraordinarily good hires. As a result, although the department is not at full staff at the moment, uh, this department is solid, respected by the community, and there's a totally different outlook um, as compared with uh, several years in the past. I don't believe that a certification will make a bit of difference to the quality of this department. I'm very concerned about the cost of this and also the fact that in the future, I can see Chief Kelly coming before the voters and saying, we need more of this or more of that to maintain our certification. The voters, of course, I suspect will not approve that, and therefore we will lose our certification. Uh, this is a very expensive process to go through. It's a very expensive process to maintain. Um, this town has always been uh, prudent, fiscally prudent with its money, and is not likely to try to meet some arbitrary standard uh, or national standard that is applied to our town. This is a very safe state from a criminal point of view, and this town is safer than uh, the state average. So the kinds of things that might make sense for other departments, I believe, don't make sense for ours. What it takes to run this department is good officers, <coughs> and we have them, and good leaders, and we have them, and accreditation really is unnecessary. So I hope that um, we will not become accredited and if, unfortunately, we do, that we will not be compelled or even asked to spend more money to maintain the accreditation when the department doing the good work that they have been doing recently uh, asks for um, more resources than the town is willing to give. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak that is not uh, signed in yet? Yeah, thank you everybody again for appearing tonight. If there are no further comments, then I declare this public hearing closed. <laughs>